Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to do what we do every time there's a new pre-release, and we need to remind ourselves very clearly, stop buying singles. I think that was nice and clear. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're in that position at the moment where the Lost Origin pre-releases have happened. Now, not all of them. There's still some going to be carrying on this weekend. But we have seen that Lost Origin has... Well, it, it's, it's kind of... It's been semi-released. Like I say, we've got the pre-release, which is lovely. And that's wonderful. But the set isn't out yet. The set officially released on the 9th of September, which is next Friday. And essentially what that means is that next Friday, we are going to be in a situation where Lost Origin floods onto the market. But we have a situation right now where Lost Origin has not actually gone and been released. So we've got a bunch of people who are getting very excited about the new set, like I am. It's quite a, it's a very cool set. I do think it's better than Brilliant Stars and Astral Radiance. I do think when we sit back and look, this is going to be, especially for collectors, this is going to be the set. So we're in a situation where a lot of people want these shiny new fancy cards, and I don't blame them. But there aren't that many out there. The amount out there are quite slim. So we've got people basically going a little bit silly. And that's what we find here. I mean, let's take the big card in the set. Let's take the alternate art of Giratina V. This is clearly like the money card in the set, so to speak. This is the number one card. And if we have a look at Giratina V... What we can see is that the three most recent, you know, the, the three first auctions that come up when we go and look over on eBay are trying to sell it for around about $300. We've got $343, $232 with no bids, and $299. So I think we can confidently call that like a $300 card. That's what people are trying to sell it for. Now, obviously, what people are trying to sell it for doesn't really matter. We need to see what people are actually paying. So if we stay on eBay, but we go and flick over to sold listings, what we find is it's over $200. I mean, here's three listings in a row that sold on August the 29th, a couple of days ago, for $250, $250, and $350. So when I say people are treating it like a $300 card... I'm not saying it's being put up for bid, but no one's actually bidding. It's not really. No, no. Right now, this is uh, probably about a $250, $300 card. And I, and I cannot stress this enough, ladies and gentlemen. There is absolutely... Well, no, that's a lie. All right. There are very few reasons why you should be paying $300 for this card right now. I mean, to put it simply... If you've got a reason, go for it. Ain't your dad? Unless you're Ruben Archie or Daisy, in which case I'm a bit confused why you're watching this... If you want to go and buy it, go and buy it. Maybe you want to be the first person to get it graded and resell it. Maybe you've got the means and you don't want to wait. There, there, there are reasons why people want to buy these cards. And that's absolutely fine. I am not telling you don't go and buy the cards. Although, yes, I know I did explicitly say that at the start. What I'm telling you is, please know that if you're buying these cards now, you are overpaying. You can wait a while and the price of these cards is going to drop quite significantly. And if you're okay with that, then that's absolutely fine. But please do just know that if you buy the cards now, you will be paying over the odds. And as always, I don't just want to make random baseless claims. I can prove it to you. So let's take May 16th. May 16th was around about the pre-release of Astral Radiance. And if we have a look at Palkia V, you'll notice that it was around about a $200 card. Someone got a bargain for $130, but Palkia V was around about a $200 card. But we're a few months, you know, we're three months out. The next set is coming out. So we can now just go and play this game and we can go and look at sold listings. And what do we see in the recent past? $66. $48 and $42, but it didn't actually sell for $42. That was a best offer accepted. If you went and bought Palkia over around about the pre-release time, you would be paying somewhere in the region of $200. 
which is clearly far too much. If you go and buy Palkia now, it's like a $50 card. Probably can pick it up a bit less. It's like a quarter of the price. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, Palkia wasn't some aberration. We can keep going. Dialga, a roundabout release, was somewhere in the region of about a $100 card. We've got listings here that sold for $90, $115, and a best offer accepted on $180. So Dialga, it, it's about a $100 card. You're probably paying over $100. That's what the alternate art of Dialga V was going to set you back if you bought it around about the pre-release time. What are we looking at now? Like 50 bucks. And don't get me wrong, right? It's not a, um, it's not quite as cheap as, you know, it's not quite as, quite as big a drop as Palkia, but people were going a bit nuts for Palkia. Uh, weirdly, it ends up being slightly more expensive in the US. I'm showing you listings here that actually sold in the UK that have been converted into US. But in the US, it is sometimes selling for $50, so don't worry. It's about a $50 card. And the weirdest one for me on release was Temple of Sinnoh. And look, I love my alternate art, my gold Kato cards. You know I love my gold Kato stadiums. But there were, you know, we, we've got a best offer accepted $100. So somebody paid somewhere in the region of around about $100 for Temple of Sinnoh, which seems absolutely ludicrous. How much is it now? It's a $12 card. Like, there's literally three in a row here. They're basically $12 cards. So... These gold stadiums were always going to be super cheap. There is absolutely no reason to, to go buy an over the top. Now, I will say that Giratina V is special. That is a card which is firstly hyper playable, secondly amazing artwork. But again, in a world where Dialga's a $50 card and Palkia's a $50 card, and they're, you know, Dialga's got the Mitsuhiro Rita artwork and Palkia's got amazing artwork and Palkia's super playable, I don't, I, I could absolutely see Giratina settling higher than them. But again, Dialga and Palkia are $50 cards. Do we really think that Giratina is a $250 card? The answer is clearly no. And that's kind of ridiculous. And I know that people are happy to pay these and that's absolutely fine. No judgment at all. But I am telling you that this card is going to crash in price. I mean, right now, if we take a look at, you know, Radiant Gardevoir. Radiant Gardevoir is by far the best of the Radiant Pokemon in the set. And if you look at the last three sold listings, you're talking about $12, $11, and $20. And... I am fully aware that when we look at the prices here, we're going, well, hang on a second. That's fine. That's all right. That's not particularly expensive. Why should we over, you know, it's not really overpaying if we go for that, is it? And the answer is, yeah. Because if we look at the other Radiant Pokemon, I'm going to switch to TCG player now so we can see them more easily. Radiant Greninja sees a bunch of play. It's a $3 card. You know, Holucha and Heatran are like 14 and 22 cents. Blastoise is $7.50. Venusaur, $6. The only Radiant Pokemon that has held any value at all is Charizard at $25. And don't get me wrong. You know, Gardevoir is a very popular Pokemon. And it is a pretty playable card. So I could see it settling higher than most of the others. But bearing in mind, if it settled at double what we see from Radiant Greninja, it's still only a $6 card. I think we can wait on this one, ladies and gentlemen. I think we can wait on this one. I mean, Gold Pikachu V Max. Don't get me wrong, this is going to go down as one of the most expensive, probably the most expensive of these gold cards. Right now, it's showing up on eBay as like a $50 card. And it is Pikachu, and everybody loves Pikachu. So, absolutely, we could see this settling a little bit higher. But if we actually go and look at the other gold cards, the Urshifu have settled at about two dollars each and the calyrex have gone and settled for about two dollars each so i'm not telling you that 
we're going to see this being a $2 card. I am absolutely not telling you this is going to be a $2 card. I absolutely am telling you that these gold cards have attracted almost no value because of how easy they are to pull. So in a world where the other four cards are $2 cards, why is Pikachu going to be a $50 card? And again, Pikachu is not going to be a $2 card. Not at all. But does anyone really see it settling above $20, $30? You know, Radiant Charizard's sitting there at $25. Because even though it's a Radiant Charizard, it's still a Radiant Pokemon. And the pull rates were quite high. So yeah, sure, Gold Pikachu's a $50 card right now. But in a world where all of the other four gold cards have all settled at $2, I refuse to believe that this is going to be a $50 card. I just, I don't see it happening, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't seem realistic to me. And we can see a very similar thing happening with Mew. It's rocking down there as like a $40 card. And again, Mew is an extremely playable card. Don't get me wrong. And Mew is a very popular Pokemon. It's going to settle above $2, obviously. But there's no way it ends up being a $40 card. That is not realistic, and I don't believe it's going to happen. So no, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not buying it. It's worth noting over on TCG Play, you can look at the graphs looking at the um, the prices over time. And if we look at the price history for the gold Shadow Rider Calyrex, it did actually start at a $10 card and then like dropped massively down to a $2 card. I'm not guaranteeing prices for any of these cards. And there's always a chance that one of these cards is going to pull a Machamp. That being that the, the alternate art Machamp suddenly got crazy expensive because of a buyout and hasn't actually come back down again, not to a reasonable level. There's always an outside chance something like that's going to happen. Don't get me wrong. But generally speaking, these cards, they don't just drop in value between, you know, after, after the real release happens. They plummet in value. These cards you should be seeing pretty quickly are going to absolutely tank in value. And frankly, it's not something I think is a great idea as an investment right now. If you want to do it, go and do it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I've told you, I ain't your dad. But I do think it's very important to note that as it stands at the moment, these cards are way more expensive than they should be. And I feel extremely confident that over the next couple of months, the prices of these are just going to absolutely plummet. So my advice to you guys, wait. If you don't want to wait, that's absolutely fine. But you've got to have a reason. Because just going and randomly buying them now, I don't think is a good idea. And if anybody out there is going, well, hang on a second, Wossy. Come on, you've told us this before. You're right. I have told you this before. But every time a new set comes out, I'm able to give you multiple examples of people overpaying for cards that were inevitably going to plummet in price. So until people stop massively overpaying for pre-release cards, I need to keep showing you why it's a silly idea. Unless, of course, you've got a good reason to do so. Like I've said, if you've got a good reason to do so, go ahead, have some fun. This is advice and nothing more. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you need to know. And now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me which singles in the set you want to be picking up. And tell me how long you're going to wait to do so. Let me know in the comment section. Get us. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Pokemon and a bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio. Where you can join a Discord and chat some Pokemon where you can get weekly bonus pods. This week I'm talking all about my world's experience. Usually I answer all of your questions. And I give shout outs to people like the lovely Mike, who has been a supporter for a little while and is a very lovely person. So Mike, thank you for the support and thank you for being a thoroughly lovely person. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.